Well, no way. Look at that. It's another Think or Swim video. Joe with you here at Maverick. I'm going to use this video to do two things. I want to show what Think or Swim could do with, with its Analyze tab and the Options Risk Graph. It's a cool way visually, I should say, to see how options work. I'm also going to use this opportunity to kind of give the basics of the vertical spread. Now, folks, I've been teaching, coaching for years, many, many years, 8, 10. I don't know where it's at now, but... I've found that when options traders for the first time are trying to understand calls and puts, they seem to gravitate or understand the call quicker than the put. The first combo I usually segue with is the vertical spread. In this case, the bull call or the debit spread using calls. It's funny because once I teach this concept, it becomes the one that most of my traders sticks to the longest because they understand it. It's easy. It makes total sense. You put it on. It does what it does, so on and so forth. So I'm going to do a quick breakdown of that. Hopefully, it'll help you guys uh, understand the concept. Not only that, but to show the basic navigation and the features that the TOS Risk Graph offers. It's cool. Boy, it was really hard for me to understand options because I was trying to do the Greeks with pen and paper. And I am horrible at math. But it wasn't until I actually got to see them moving and breathing on a Risk Graph, understanding how they work, that it actually gave me a concept of, hey, options trading is basically it's a gray area. It's not black and white. You know, we buy a stock, it goes up five bucks, you make five bucks. That's not true with options. Depending on how fast it goes up, depending on how far it goes up, and a combination of the two. So we'll talk a little bit about how the risk graph can actually smooth that out for us. Analyzing the probability and possibility of performance over time, choosing the strike prices, choosing the expiration cycles, and a combination of both. It can really give you insight on what you need, you can expect. Remember, folks, expect. It is a gray area with options. Volatility constantly changes. So keep that in mind. All right. So let's jump in to our example. Now, obviously, the first thing we need to do is find a bullish trade. And I found USO here, guys. Let's do a quick disclaimer. This might not be the same chart when you get to this video. This is example only. Keep that in mind. But what I did like about it, it is a pattern I like. Personally, that's conducive to a vertical spread. This is an ascending triangle pattern. If you guys are looking to get more information on this, feel free to peruse our hundreds of hours of videos on chart setups. But I want to jump ahead to the combo itself. So I'm going to find, I'm going to go ahead and just say I got a target here at 95. Now, this has a lot to do with kind of the channel, drawing channel lines, the expectations of a time frame. In this, in this instance, folks, I'm looking at about 14 to 21 days. In time, I'm thinking to target about 95, uh, and I like to start my vertical spreads pretty much at the money. So I'm looking for a 55 delta, 55 to 60 delta on the back end, meaning the leg that I'm going to buy. Now, with all that being said, let's jump to the Analyze tab and find out what I have to choose from. One thing that's pretty cool, I just, I'd let you know, I like to find a chart first. I understand that options do derive their values from the stock and the stock price and the stock's movement and the stock's behavior. All of the Greeks are impacted by this. So I find that if I find a good chart first, then I take a look at the options I have to choose from. I'd rather have, you know, it's a chicken egg thing, right? Which came first. I would, I would rather have the right move before I even looked at the options. And this is what I've learned over the years with Maverick is if you make a mistake in the right direction with options, you actually do pretty cool, right? We talked about how options are actually gray. There's a gray area to them. So if you did a bullish trade on a bullish chart and misselected the options, the expiration dates and so on and so forth, you're probably going to be okay. All right, so let's jump back to what we have here. This is the 17th of June. This is the expiration cycle for the month. In this case, it's the third Friday. That's why it's this white 14 days out. But we do have an option to do the weekly, the 24th, one week after that, uh, which is 21 days out. So I've got the choice here. I've got a $95 target. Let me jump back to the chart up in this area. And I have the choice of either 14 days or 21 days. Now, folks, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that I would rather be a little short, come up short of the target, because you're going to find that decay is huge when it comes to vertical spreads. Not only the, the bull call spread, in this case the debit, but credit spreads. A lot of traders come to me when they're fresh, brand new. Hey, I've been doing a whole bunch of you know, selling uh, selling options, selling calls, selling puts, or condors, selling vertical spreads, so on and so forth. It's Those are great strategies. 
But what they don't understand is they, they really depend on expiration. They have to carry all the way through the expiration to get the best bang for the buck. I've got traders that'll sell a put, expect it to decay over time. Three days later, they go ahead and try to cover it and they don't make any money. And the reason being is because they sold a five-week contract. And if you only let it bleed for three days, there's no money in it. So that's kind of where I wanted to drive this home when it comes to this example. So let's jump back out to our choices. Let's start with the 14 day out. Now I like to buy a 55 to 60 delta and I've got two choices here folks if you can take a look at this. I've got a 88 and 87. USO is great because it's giving us dollar strike prices. However, it's almost easier to have less strike prices to choose from because I'm going to have that solid delta I'm looking for. Now I've got to make that decision. However, it's pretty easy to do when I can build them on this analysis tab, take a look at them visually, and I can make my decision based on my preference. So let's start with ooh, let's start with the 88. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the ask that puts down a buy for that uh, that uh, call, and then I'm going to sell. I usually always sell my strike price, folks. If you want more information, we have videos on this. Please feel free to jump on and take a look at them. Hold down the control button. When it comes to TOS, click on it. It brings down the sell order here. Now I have a beautiful little vertical spread down there. I want to always drop my contracts to where, well, not that far, uh, where I can see one because I like to do the math and I'm bad at math. So I like to see what my risk reward is. Now, folks, I've got a 88 call and a 95 call. This is a $7 spread and it's going to cost me $2.25. So it's really cool when you get this that you can uh, take a calculator here. I'm just going to go $7, right? Minus the cost of, in this case, 2.25 equals $4.75 of return. Now, if I want to know how much I'm risking versus reward, I just take that 4.75 and divide it by 2.25, and it gives me a 2.11 to risk reward ratio, meaning I'm risking uh, half, right? I mean, I could make two to one on this trade. I like to do this personally because if you put the risk in the combo, there's a lot less maintenance you have to do. It keeps the emotion out of it. You put the trade on, you believe in the trade, you let it go. Whether I'm right or wrong, I know that I'm only going to risk 225 to make a possible 475. I'll flip that coin all day. So let's take a look at it visually. Here is our risk graph. Now I have, let's go back to what it defaults to. Usually you're going to see the current day, which is right now, and you're going to see at expiration, which is this red line. So the purple line is currently what this option or the combo is actually doing. And the red line is what it will be at expiration. One thing I'll have you focus on, I'm just going to make one line here because as I continue to go, just keep your eye over there. It's a really cool area. When I move the cursor up and down, it gives you potential gains, losses, so on and so forth, based on the position that you have uh, looking at that you're analyzing at the moment. So, if I go up to our target here of 95, you can see it plateaus. That's how the vertical spreads work. We will see that we've got that $4.75 gain, right? 470 bucks. It's in the red. However, if this was to hit our target today, it might not. I'm going to give you a day step here in a second. We would only make two, what was that 235? So it's significantly less. Let's go ahead and bust this out over a few days. Um, uh, let's get to the day step here. I'm going to do three with a five day step. Now why I did three and five is because I like to see as close to expiration as I can for one of the steps. So each one of these lines represents five days from previous. Now take a look. There is our purple line showing that 235 bucks, 333 dollars, whatever it is. But then take a look at the red line. Even five days later, we don't make much more. Five days after that, this is ten. This is ten days into the combo's lifetime. We're only pushing about three hundred three bucks. This is a four seventy five. That's one hundred and seventy bucks on on the table that we're leaving. Notice the difference between this blue line and this pink one. That last five days is crucial, and this will get worse as you go further out, right? So keep that in mind. So what I want to do is make sure that I get my time frame correct. It's actually better to make the mistake on time than it is target. Uh, I would rather have this expire at $94, right? I'd rather have it expire at $94 than have it expire at 90, 
or have it get to 95 and have me take it five days early. Take a look at that. So $94, looking at that blue box down to the left, $375. I'd make $375 off of this expire. If I let this go all the way to $95 and took profits after 10 days, I only make $250. So allowing it to expire, take a look at the slope of this line. It, it greatly beats out any of these. I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to uh, hammer home here, folks. Now, you can go to different expiration cycles. Let's jump out that last uh, another week. Let's go out 21 days. Here's 20 ways to expiration. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can't change the day step to where I get expiration. I'm going to do 2 and probably 11. I think that gets us. There we go. It gets us to 21. All right. So the same idea. Look at the, the steepness of 11 days away from expiration versus where it is now and even 11 days after that. So isn't that crazy? So here's the first 11 or here's the first day. Here's today. Here's 11 days after that all the way back to expiration. 21 days past that. It is just a huge difference in gain. Now, one thing that I've, I like to make note of, take a look at the price. A lot of traders would default to, hey, just as $2.40. We were talking about a spread that was $2.25. So for less than 25 cents, for less than 15 cents more, I could buy another week of time. In this case, the expiration uh, 21 days out versus 14. This is where a lot of traders fall through this this trap. Hey, well, I'll go ahead and pay 25, you know, 15 cents more, and I get an extra seven days. You're punished on this gap. The worst thing that could happen is it in 14 days this stock hits 95 because you could see you're nowhere near the gains that you would have had if. Check this out, guys. Let me bounce back. If you just stuck at the 15. Let me drop it down to where it's fair. Five days out. And st stuck with your, I should say, stick with your guns. You guys have heard that, right? Three day step. Sorry, folks. See? Stick with your guns at 95. $475. So it's not always, a cheap option isn't always the best route, meaning, hey, I can get an extra piece of chunk of time when it comes to this vertical spread for just a little bit more. Well, that little bit more, you have to wait that chunk of time to get the total gains. I, it's the biggest misconception I find when it comes to vertical spreads, and I do like to teach it to some of our traders. Whether you've been around the block a lot or you're brand new to it, it's overlooked a lot. So keep that in mind. Now, if I could spend 25 cents, 15 cents more for a straight call, well, then, of course, it's all day long because we know that a call does not have this plateau on the top here nor this decay line or, excuse me, this, uh, this curve. It's going to be straight up. The stock goes up 10 bucks. You're going to make, a, based on your delta, whatever that is. So they needed to uh, be treated a little different. All right, guys, a little bit of an overview. Hopefully you understand how to jump back and forth when it comes to this thinkorswim analytical risk graph. It's really cool. You can play with all sorts of different scenarios. Um, if you guys have any more questions about the vertical spreads or how I like to use them, we have a ton of videos here at Maverick. So thanks for joining me, guys, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.